I ordered some new toys from the US, which just arrived, and I'm not talking about the cat litter, which is <laughs> still standing there for chic. Uh, apologizing for that, but that is going to be quite insane. I just wanted to show the label with the weight. Almost 55 kilograms, so that is a very heavy thing, and it should be very interesting. And with these words, welcome back to a new video. And today in this video, we will take a closer look at this server, which is made by the company that invented the first dual core CPU, which is not AMD and which is also not Intel because IBM invented the first dual core CPU in 2001. Well, made it commercially available. And uh, that was a IBM powered CPU. IBM Power 4. On my table we have an IBM Power 5, which should be even more interesting because from what I've seen over the last years, the IBM Power 5 CPUs should be the most interesting CPUs you can probably look at, especially if you compare this with any kind of like desktop CPU you, you probably know. And that's why I ordered this very specific server from the US and um, that was also quite expensive, but it should be very interesting. I think this will be split into different videos because from what I've seen so far, these servers somehow managed to have the most obscure memory solutions and CPU solutions and VRM configurations and all this kind of stuff. So we will probably split this up a little bit. This will be the first like overview video. And um, yeah, talking about overview, there is also a very interesting overview just right on top here. If we look at the front, we can see System P5, which indicates that it is a Power 5 server. But this is also a very specific model because this is an 8-way version. There are multiple like 2-way, 4-way and 8-way server configurations, but this is the one which is by far the most difficult to find. This is the very helpful top overview I was talking about, especially because I'm not so familiar with anything that comes from the server market. I literally have no clue about this stuff. That's why this is quite handy. Especially if we can see that if we want to remove the top cover, we first have to remove the front cover as well. Then we have a nice overview of like all the slots in the front and then this should be probably like a status indicator depending on what the server is doing right now. This should also still work as far as I know. We can try, but since this has no display output, I'm not sure if we will have any kind of use useful information, but we can still try if anything happens or not. You can see it has dual PSUs in the back. Also, if you look at the main board, then it gets quite freaky. We have processor cards, like dual processor cards and also VRM cards. That's going to be really insane. I'm just going to plug in the PSUs and then first one is working, second one is working. Some sort of standby thing seems to be working. I'm not sure what those like C number things should tell me, but let's just see what happens. Not much, it seems. I'm not sure what just happened because I actually didn't do anything, but some colorful things are popping up. And I'm not talking about chic. Let's just start with the front cover. Let's just remove the PSUs first because I think these will be the least interesting for us. Looking at the specs, I think those should be 1050 watt each. So theoretically 2000 watt on the server. Seems like that's the connection to the main board. It's completely different from any kind of like ATX spec we are familiar with from the desktop market. To fans, those should be the fans we just heard when we powered on the server. In the front, I guess we had the hard drive base. Those were cooled and also the expansion cards, which you could place in here. I'm not sure what the remaining card was doing or is doing, but the fans are also very cool. You just squeeze it and you can take them out. It's a very cool design, just with the power connector on the side. Easy to remove, easy to replace, no cables needed. It's also very good for, air, for the airflow, very nice. For the expansion cards, we have these plastic cards in between. There is this one which is not sitting that nice. And with these additional plastic cards, 
um, they made like a optical connection with the LEDs sitting next to the slot down there. And these LEDs then could transport the light through these like plastics to either the back or the top and you could see the status. Let's remove the one expansion card which is in here. What I at least can tell is that this is a 3.3 volt PCI 64 bit connection. That would be the typical 3.3 volt PCIe 32 bit. And whenever this part on the right is here in addition, then it's 64 bit. The key here indicates the 3.3 volt. I'm not sure what exactly this is. I would guess it's an SDSI card, but I'm not 100% sure. If you are sure, if you know what it is, please let me know. If you find this type of server product very interesting, then you should definitely also check out the EX100, which is a new dedicated root server by our partner Hetzner, now available with the new Intel i9-12900K. In combination with 128 GB of memory, dual 1.92 TB NVMe drives, no minimum contract period as usual, starting from 109 euro per month. Find out more in the link in the description. Let's finally get to the more interesting part, which are those two modules. You can already read it. Processor 2, processor 1. You can also remove this one. It's another plug and play fan with this very nice connector. The first processor card is removed. We can already see like the connection down there, something that looks like a chipset or whatever. But this thing right here, this should be the VRM of the CPU card. And the interesting thing is that this is like, it's socketed like a memory module. I think we may be able to remove this. But first we are going to remove the second processor module. But now we can get a full view of the VRM cards. Also, considering how much power these servers consume, it's fairly interesting that they're sitting rather loose in the socket, considering how much like current they're drawing. It's a bit surprising. We have some sort of like chipsets in there, but I have literally no clue what they're doing because it's also very difficult to find any information about these out there, especially about this very specific version of the server. That's why I'm not quite sure what these chips are doing, but yeah going to investigate the VRM modules further. The capacitor size is also fairly impressive if you compare this with any kind of nowadays desktop motherboard, that's a completely different level. Seems to be 6.3 volt, 8200 microfarad, which is, that is quite a lot. This is somehow comparable to a nowadays socket, but I guess it's more comparable to a slot card, like Pentium slot card, okay. If we are thinking about the big players in our business, we're mostly talking about like Intel, AMD, probably Nvidia, but a lot of people are always forgetting about IBM, which is definitely different to these other companies, but in the IT market, it's still one of the biggest companies out there. Just 2020, they had a revenue of 73 billion. Compared to Intel, they only had like 4 billion less than Intel, while for example, AMD only had like 10 billion. So that's a huge difference. But IBM was responsible for a lot of great innovations. They invented the floppy disk and uh, they had the first commercially available hard drive disk. So they had certainly a huge impact on the PC market, not only with these types of like very specific servers. This is one of the CPU modules. We will investigate this in the next video. For the last thing for today's video, we will investigate further the VRM module, which is also a very interesting approach. Obviously, in these servers, you could have different types of CPUs, and some CPUs might consume a lot less power than the others. So it could be one reason that you would have different types of VRM modules for different types of power ratings. And at the same time, that could also be a very relevant point of failure. And then it's very easy to just replace the card rather than to replace the entire motherboard. This kind of power solution is quite different to what we can see on desktop motherboards. It's very interesting. It's called X-Phase Design. It's from International Rectifier. We have an IR3081, which is sitting on top right here. And this is what you could compare with the typical VRM controller on a main board. However, this VRM controller is connected with X amount of other VRM controllers. And that's why I guess this is also called X-Phases 
because this one is just controlling other controllers, which then are probably controlling MOSFETs or power stages sitting underneath the heatsink. That's why I guess we just have to remove the heatsink, see what is sitting underneath here. But that's a bit different to what we can find on desktop motherboards. I guess just counting these should be nine phases in total. Very interesting VRM solution, which definitely reminds me of GTX 580 Classified. Kind of similar. We have a low side and high side MOSFET rather than a power stage. Also direct fat metal casing, very interesting devices, international rectifier 6618 on the low side and high side I cannot really read, but should be just um, the product which is on par. So probably if you look up the 6618, then you can also find the high side MOSFET for this purpose. If you turn it around on the back side, we can spot a shunt resistor. So the same thing Nvidia still uses today for power measurement. For some reason, these cards absolutely remind me of the ePower modules we used to solder to graphics card for a very long time. I'm also thinking if it will be possible to just use one of these cards for the same purpose. I guess it should be possible. They don't look like they will have a lot of like security circuits on there. So it should maybe be quite easy to use one of them as an ePower module. I will look into this and maybe we will do that in a separate video and also in the next video about the IBM power we will closer investigate the CPU power module like the entire CPU card that will be very interesting I can absolutely promise that. Take care, have a good Sunday, see you soon.